Well, most of us are familiar with the common cancer treatments of radiation or chemotherapy. And of course, a lot of us know that the side effects of those are often causing more sickness and pain than the cancer itself. They're at, at the forefront, though, of cancer treatments are immunotherapies and targeted molecular therapies that are really a lot better at killing cancer without doing damage to the patient's healthy tissue. And John, your firm, Arbelly, is at the forefront of this immunotherapy research. And you're being hosted here at the Hong Kong Science Technology Park, where Albert oversees over 100 biotech firms and growing yep. very rapidly with up to 700 companies at the park already. The immunotherapy solution that you've come up with is able to train our own immune system, our T cells, to kill one T cell, to kill up to 100,000 cancer cells. That's a pretty amazing ratio. So how have you able to, been able to achieve that? The foundation of uh, T cell immunotherapy is based on a simple and proven concept that our body has the capability to recognize and kill the cancer cells. But somehow, for some reasons, uh, uh, due to mutations or aging, our T cells become uh, losing the ability to recognize or kill them. So the current technology is uh, uh, to introduce a gene into the whole T cell, just like uh, install a GPS device mm -hmm. on okay. the T cell and allow the T cell uh, to find the tumor uh, in our body and attack and kill them. So uh, that will limit uh, the toxicity, and also the T cell can uh, uh, prolong and sustain in our whole body for a long time. Our technology e can equip a safety mechanism or safety switch. Uh, we can turn off the T cell anytime uh, we want. So that's the beauty of uh, our technology. Uh, once out of control, uh, we can uh, shut down the, uh, the T cells. So it's really cutting edge stuff and regulators haven't really caught up to this yet. And Albert, one of the things that the park offers is support for firms like John's to get uh, out through clinical trials, get to commercialization and get through these regulatory approvals. Right. How, how do you do that? Any startup, I mean, bio or non-bio, there's always a, a, city, a value of death, all right? And uh, the company, the startup company needs help in cash. So we could help them from a science park standpoint, help them with a certain level. But we really need to bring in the investors to help them go through the deep valley of that for biomedical. And we, we're helping them with Series A to, to seat round, but we need investors to come in at other stages, including pre revenue IPO in Hong Kong. So a lot of things that has to happen. John, do you think that there's uh, a lot of headwinds coming uh, with new therapies like yours going to market? Obviously not everything's gonna go as planned. What do you think are some of the risks with this, the platform that you're developing? I think the, 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 the strongest headwind is the, uh, the regulatory environment uh, because uh, uh, most of the regulatory environment based on the uh, old rules. So the, uh, the, the therapy is so new, so the regulatory body are not familiar. So I think uh, what we can do is to, uh, to educate the general public and also try to uh, educate the, uh, the regulatory uh, government. Bodies. And that education process, obviously, you can have a role in that, yeah. Albert, as, as part of this as well. This uh, struggle between technology and, and, and regulation is always there. Because like Dr. Lu was saying, that this therapy is not really a drug. This is not drug, but this is taking some of the blood out, out from your body, do something about it, put it back. There's no regulation to go after that. But um, how do we educate the regulator and the general public to understand this is not drug, but this is some, some sort of precision therapy? What do you think the roadmap looks like for immunotherapies from where we are today to getting this really commercialized? Uh, how far away are we? There are already uh, two or three drugs, uh, CAR-T therapy already approved it in the United States and also in uh, Australia. So they have been uh, uh, evidence, a uh, proof of uh, concept. This uh, therapy is safe and also very effective. So for blood cancer, the uh, remission rates are over 80%. That means the cancer completely gone. We plan to go to clinical trial uh, for our product uh, this year, later this year. So uh, uh, I think it's very important for us to become a, a clinical stage biotech company. Our valuation will be totally different and we will definitely will get more support. Well, the other thing I want, to, I want to add on to it when you talk about the path of immunotherapy is that I always talk about this, we're going to live to 120. Because a lot of these diseases will be killed. It's pretty cool what, what is doing a local Hong Kong technology 
getting into the clinical trial, we, we're going to live to 100. And so, Albert, why do you think the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park is particularly well positioned to help firms like John expand into a global footprint? Well, um, in biomedical development, you need a lot of clinical trial regulatory approvals. And Hong Kong is a place where you can do FDA and CFDA. And with the recent Greater Bay Area announcement, there will be green channel for biosamples and data. So um, you're looking at all of a sudden looking at a, a, a big market in China, Greater Bay Area, and you can do the clinical trial for the U.S., for Hong Kong, for China, and for Europe in Hong Kong.